Hello everyone, my name is Tomislav Glubvik uh, and for this year for the Autodesk ANZ YouTube channel I'm going to publish a series of videos just going through uh, creating a plant project uh, obviously with Plant 3D and then uh, editing some of that uh, plant structure in advanced steel even utilizing a little bit of Revit uh, even some Navis works and, and we might even get into maybe a little bit of uh, InfraWorks um, and some 3ds Max and maybe some 3ds Max interactive towards the end to create a VR project so the first of, the, of these videos is going to be about creating a plant project um, now off the bat it is um, quite easy I guess but again for people who are using plant for the very first time this um, is a good introduction in, in how uh, we create a plant project. Uh, I will also go through some of the background uh, settings uh, in, in the project properties uh, and even maybe a couple of best practices uh, in regards to folders and files um, and that sort of stuff for our, our plant project. So when you start Plant 3D, you get this dashboard here where we can open or create a new project uh, and you know getting started with PNID and with Plant. PNID is no longer its own product. It is now sold as part of the, the plant package, I guess. Um, so if you just wanted to do PNIDs, um, you would only need to buy plant um, on its own and only use the, the plant portion of it. So to kick off, we go to project and click on new. Uh, and I'm just going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this uh, YouTube series. Uh, and I'm going to say demo project for YouTube. Uh, we can obviously create this project in Vault. I uh, will not be doing that for this project, but if you need to, you can create it. Uh, I'm going to stick it on my secondary drive on this PC. So I'm just going to stick it on my D drive and under plant projects. And if I had an existing project, I could copy settings from existing project. Uh, and then select the other project and then this new project would inherit those properties. Uh, because I am in Australia, I am going to do a metric, just a millimeters project. I'm not going to do inches as, as in mixed metric and I'm not going to do Imperial. I'll show you quickly what happens with Imperial. We get PIP and ISA PNID standards. If we do metric, we get PIP, ISO, DIN and JIS. So this is important for, for something that you'll need to know down the track um, when you do select a PNID standard. So I'm just going to select PIP. Uh, when you do select that standard, you can't mix uh, the symbology unless you go back and, and re-edit uh, some of the configurations. So for now, we're just going to stick with PIP. Um, I personally like to just use the defaults. So I'm going to leave the models under 3D models, spec sheets under spec sheets, ortho drawings under ortho drawings, and related files under related files. Uh, the spec sheets directory, if you're working in a, in a large corporation, we are doing a lot of work for um, other, other companies or clients, I guess, and you're going to be continuously doing that work. You can change that to a more common directory. Uh, I'm only going to be doing a single user because I am a single user. If you had multi-user, you could do SQL Server databases. If you are going to be using the cloud, as in BIM 360 team, you would just use it as single user, and then you would click on the Collaborate button up there in the menu and collaborate that project to the cloud. Uh, it does not need SQL Server. You can just use SQLite, but the cloud um, backend will take care of all of the databases, etc. Uh, obviously, I can finish the, the wizard and I'm going to tick the button to edit more settings. So that's just going through and creating um, the directory of the project name that I had and populating any other subfolders under there as well. So I'm just going to let that finish. And while that's doing that, we can just have a look quickly at our D drive and plant projects and you can see it's made the project YouTube series and it's also created all the subfolders and the files for that as well. So now if we go back to plant, 
I have my plant YouTube series, I have the pin IDs, the plan drawings, the pipes fix and the related files there. So just having a look at these database, uh, at these, these uh, settings for this project. So the first one there is database settings. Um, this is SQLite or SQL Server. You can convert from local database to server database. Just click on learn more and that'll take you to a help folder. Drawing properties is something you can add, add later. So again, I'm, I'll show you that I think when we start our first pin ID in the next video. File naming format is just that, adding a file naming format. So I might do area, which is a string or numeric. So it will just be a string. It will be three characters long and the delimiter will be a hyphen. So this might be when someone creates a new project, they populate the area value in there as well. So just for now, I'm not going to do that. The paths is where I can change paths. So again, very similar to what I showed you before uh, and uh, some of the template files as well for the PNIDs. Project details is just that, so the project details. So for this, I'm just going to populate a project number in there. Uh, I'm going to add an address. So I'm just going to say that um, it is going to be uh, one, two, three, Evergreen Terrace. Springvale state is unknown, postcode unknown, telephone, um, I'll just do 03, 03 and I'll just call myself the project manager and for the client uh, I'm going to say Bob's piping and the primary contact is Bob. So this will, will show up later in some of the drawings. Reports, just quickly see a list of uh, reports and what's in them. Obviously, for now, we, we have a uh, we have an empty project, so there's not going to be anything in there. And by default, the plant content lives on the C drive. You can change that to be on a network as well, uh, plus some A360 drive uh, or manual sharing of that content. So again, that's something we can have a look at later. Uh, but in, in a larger project or, or larger company, you'd have it uh, on, on network itself. The pin ID drawing settings are just that. So end connections, flanged, socket welded or welded. We have our different line settings. So whether you want a gap or a loop, what the break symbol looks like, any other standoffs. The class definitions is, is a good one to have a look at because this is where we can change the symbology of particular pin ID objects. So I can edit the symbol and go through and look at the layers and the scaling and I can also edit the block which means I can go into the AutoCAD block editor and then go through and edit uh, any attachment points, sizes, I can fill this arrowhead in so it's it's always going to be solid rather than drawn with those lines. This is where you change uh, the, the blocks graphically and then once we go back to here, we can come through, look at having pipe specs in the PNID itself. So again, if you are using pipe specs for a PNID, you can lock them into a piping spec. Otherwise, by default, uh, it's just a, a standard uh, text value, I guess, if you want to call it. Whereas if it's uh, off a spec, it's driven by the spec number there. So the drawing settings for the, the model, by default, it's line number for the layer and color by diameter, but you can go through and change those values as well. For this exercise, I'm not going to bother doing it. Pipe connection settings, again, they're pretty much populated, but if you need to go through and change it, you can. So if we want to look at just a flanged joint, I can modify that and have flanged or a lap joint flange connect to a flange or a lap joint and the property values that are matching a nominal diameter pressure class and the facing as well. And also it will come with bolt sets and gaskets. So again, if you, depending on what you need to do, this is where you'd modify that. Pipe bends, again, is just that. So bends is pipe or bends as fittings. So if you're doing pulled pipe, you can turn around and treat the bends as pipe. You've got some settings there for object mapping between the valves, let's say for example on a PNID and what the properties would be on the 3D side. Um, any 
class definition. So really on the 3D and the plant 3D side, you don't sort of look in here for the piping, but under the equipment, you might want to add extra classes in here and add extra properties. The isometric drawing settings is pretty important. So this is where you'd edit the symbols, any other annotations and tags. There's some out of the box styles in here as well. If you want to place field welds at maximum pipe lengths, you can do them at every three or six or 12 meters, whatever you want. Sizing values obviously there and where the ISOs will live. Some default settings. So if you want to have the ISOs reflect a real world coordinate, you can do in your offsets of X, Y, Z in here if you need to. Annotations. So again, it's the annotation or the text on the ISOs. Dimensions, how they look and feel. The themes, what gets um, uh, dimensioned and what doesn't, uh, and even editing the title block. So if I click on set up title block here, you can see out of the box, we have the green draw area, the red no draw area, and the blue is where the, um, where the tables will live. So for now I won't go necessarily go through and make any changes here, but we can do that later when we start to run ISOs uh, further down the track. And plus we have auto drawing settings, which is very similar to the ISOs where we can go through and um, set up our auto um, title block and plus add um, some settings in here in regards to what the layers are like or whether we use 3D layers. So again, that's something that I'll offer closer to when we run some orthographics from our project here. So now that I'm happy with that, I can click OK and we have our PNIDs, plant and related files. Under PNIDs, you can create new drawings directly under here or create subfolders and the same thing goes for 3D drawings. So for now, that uh, covers my first video for creating a project. Uh, in the next week or two, I will start creating some PNID drawings and talk about uh, creating subfolders and adding new PNIDs or even tracing over uh, old PNIDs to convert them to intelligent PNIDs. So thank you very much for listening.